New York's Democratic Attorney General Letitia James is now threatening to seize Donald Trump's assets if he can't pay that egregious penalty in a civil fraud verdict. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. Last night, Trump railed against the verdict. Well, I have a lot of cash, but that doesn't mean he can take it. I mean, you know what he did? I think he looked at my cash and he said, well, we'll take all of his cash. Letitia James is horrible attorney general in New York, campaigned on I will get Trump, I will get Trump. They're sick. And this judge is sick. He got overturned on this case so far, overturned by the appellate division four times already on this case. And while Democrats try to bleed Trump's businesses dry, top leaders are trying to bring back the Russia hoax. What do you think? We're all wondering this question, Speaker Pelosi. What do you think Putin has on him? I mean, it sure seems like something. So I don't know what he has on him, but I think it's probably financial. I mean, what do you think Putin has on him? On Trump. There's a growing pro-Putin faction yeah. Yeah. in the Republican Party, and it's led by Donald Trump. So, Judge, uh, we definitely want to get to the Russia hoax stuff because it's, uh, it's, it's always good to go back to that. But uh, starting with this unbelievable, the unbelievable verdict, this uh, effort by Letitia James to go after, you know, the, the verdict may as well have been like a, a giga cabillion, just some <laughs> absurd number because it doesn't really matter uh, that it's based in reality. It's not based in reality. And, it, you know, it's all, and, and they're, it, it's almost like they're proud of how absurd the verdict is, and, and they want everybody to realize how unfair and ridiculous it is. Well, she keeps saying it's not a victimless crime. It is right. a victimless crime. And she says the, you know, the people who are harmed are the people of the state of New York. Well, yet the people of the state of New York are, who are being harmed are the people who are victims of assaults and muggings and who are being murdered in this city that she just ignores that she doesn't care about. They're the police officers who are being assaulted by immigrants. And, you know, the viral uh, video goes around the world where people say, oh, you can come to New York and assault uh, the police officers. Look, there's a part of me that thinks that Letitia James really wants, the way she says, oh, I go by 40 Wall Street every day. I really think this woman wants to come down that golden escalator yeah. and announce in Trump Tower that she's going to run for president. I mean, I think the woman engages in all kinds of delusions. But the truth is, this, this case is not going to survive an appeal. It's not going to survive an appeal based on several issues. It's not just that uh, there, there was no victim in this case, but they're using the business law in a way that it was not intended to be used. They're using it as a consumer fraud case. And the business statute was to be used, intended to be used, against sophisticated actors. They used it as a consumer fraud statute. And they, she's got it all backwards. And she had a judge who from the get-go said the guy's a bad guy, Letitia should go after him. This is the guy who's sitting on the trial. You can't have a judge sit over a trial who literally openly is saying publicly that he hates the guy. Um, the, the bottom line is that she can seize the assets if he doesn't come up with the money in 30 days, which is a requirement for him to appeal. He's going to come up with the money. And he's going to appeal. The appellate division has four times said that a lot of these cases are, are statute time barred by the statute of limitations. So, so one of the, uh, my favorite things about Donald Trump is he makes politics accessible to everybody. So he does something like uh, earlier this week, he released a copy of the, uh, uh, the, the Eighth Amendment on his uh, website, uh, which is, the, of course, the amendment against excessive fines, Greg. And as our resident you know, constitutional scholar, um, the, doesn't the Eighth Amendment protect him? From yes, that? I, you're absolutely right. I'm glad you read my column uh, earlier today in The Hill. Uh, <laughs> in, the, uh, in, in, in the yes. Court Reform Digest? Yes, exactly. For, for, I just want to touch on the uh, Russia stuff. They say, what does Putin have on Trump? I don't know, because Putin endorsed Biden. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at yeah. that, okay? That's something they conveniently left out. She said it will be paid to New Yorkers. What does she mean by that? Yeah. No, no, we're not getting paid. We're not getting paid because there is no victim. She, where is the $355 million going to go if Trump owes the bank zero? The bank agreed he owes them nothing because they did a, he fulfilled the contract. 
He broke no laws. You know, people, whenever they bring up Trump, they always say no one is above the law. Yeah. No one is above. Well, what law? Mm -hmm. Apparently, this is a first, as Kat Tim pointed out, I think, yesterday. It's about being below the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trump is below the law, meaning you can punish him for not crossing into illegality, much like the rest of us. So generally, anybody who works in contract law, and I think Harold can agree with me on this because we talk about this a lot, Trump is 100% innocent in this. <laughs> uh, it can't be fraud because who it is, is it against? Uh, when I'm in a contract negotiation, I can pretty much present anything I want because the other side will assess it and come back with their number, and then we agree. There's no, nothing hidden in a contract. Nobody is that stupid. But if you don't work in contracts, you don't know this. Uh, this is so, I think this is all an act to keep Trump off his game. Yeah. That's all this is. But this is why we all need to move to Florida, That's Fox. Right. So because I never thought that my politics, political choices would affect my privacy, my speech, and my livelihood. But that's how it is these days. They're going to do what they did to Trump. They're going to do to you and me. And how soon before I get arrested for public indecency? And this time, <laughs> I will be innocent. So, Harold, uh, as a level-headed Democrat, does this worry you going in this direction? So a couple of things. I think the judge laid it out well what, what, the, what the law is here. He's got 30 days on this appeal, but he's got to show he has the the assets for this. Uh, as, a, as an aside, I would not have gone on ABC News or NBC, for that matter, Fox anywhere, if I were the attorney general. I mean, she's oh, up one. Yeah. Well, she's up one nothing in the sheet. The, the, uh, the former president was found liable, and a, a big judgment was rendered against him. Mm -hmm. Now he has an appeal. I actually think the, uh, the former president. Uh, just my surveying of it looks like he may have a stronger appeal here than he does in some of the other things. Argue because this law. In addition to everything that's been said, was really designed to protect the consumer, mm -hmm. and the consumer has not been not been hurt here. So it'll be interesting to see what the what the that's, uh, the higher court says. But all they're doing is following the rules here. And again, I think it's a bad look for the attorney general to be out doing these things. She's up one nothing. Let the court let the court make the next step, and then if indeed you're going to do these things, let 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 the process play itself out. How bad does this uh, politically does this backfire on on her Democrats? Yeah. Oh, I think a lot because she's overzealous. Partisan. She has no dispassion. Like she's very passionate about going after one person, and it shows. Instead of just following the law, I also think that for a lot of people across the country, it, I still actually don't understand it and don't agree with it. That you have to pay a fine like that before you can appeal. That seems really wrong. Well, you just have and, to show the assets. You don't have to. You don't have to give them the but money. It, but it. even even with that, it just seems like even if you don't like Trump, you could look at this and say that seems unfair, and it feels like there are two systems of justice. Um, I do think that it always takes the media too long to catch up to people mm -hmm. like Fonnie Willis mm -hmm. or Letitia James, but eventually they do. And what is, where's the, let's just say they get $400 million. Is that going to go to pay the $10,000 per migrant for their debit <laughs> cards? Is that the kind of reinvestment? Or can you go to 37th and 8th Avenue and clean that crap up? Because <laughs> it is terrible in this city. They've got, like, She's the attorney general. You could do so much more than going after this and causing big problems for Democrats in the long run. But I'm, I guarantee in her circle of friends oh, and her, in her text her threads, role. they love it. They think yeah. so she's dining out on this every night. Yeah. And so, something tells me even if they get the $400 million, they're not going to spend it on on. 37th and eight. Well, they seize exactly. the assets. And, uh, you know, according to a prosecutor's way of thinking, you use it for the office to fight crime, which she doesn't do. No, nope. she does not. Okay, click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.